Okay, welcome to Spring Still Studios. I'm gonna go over the exit questions now. Um, okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get a few clicks out of this exit question. So the resonance for this one is the following. That's definitely a lilac. That carbocation cation there. And if you imagine a hinge there, we've got our roach hinge. It's gonna swing over. Then we'll have the carbocation in the middle. Next, uh, I will have a hinge here. Swing that over that way. To give that. So is that correct? It is. And let's talk a little bit about it. This particular one is a primary allelic resonance contributor to this, the resonance of the whole molecule. This one is a tertiary allelic, doubly allelic. And then the final one is a primary. So which one do you think is the major contributor to the molecule? Which does the molecule look mostly like this one on the left, the middle, or the right? The middle one. Yeah. So this is your major resonance structure. So it'll look mostly like that. So what does that mean? I mean, if I draw up the resonance hybrid, say, that pot, that pi bonding is going all the way across. And we expect to have some positive charge here, some positive charge here, and then more of it there. Because the, the actual molecule should look mostly like the major resonance structure. All right, does that sound good? Yes. Next up, some resonance for the radical. So this one, we could swing that way, and there's two electrons in that pi bond, one going meeting halfway. That one there. So we get that one, and we saw the pi bond down here. So at that point, can this radical resonate with that pi bond? No. Could it over here? It can't, huh? So this one was kind of a trick. We, this one's just not set up to resonate. If you use the fish hook arrows to draw your resonance, you, you won't be fooled by that. So it's just these two resonance structures. And I guess uh, since I did one uh, resonance hybrid already, I can do another one. Why not? So we'll have the full double bond here. And then this radical is kind of, yeah, weird, huh? And that's it, no plus or minus on that one. And I don't know how I would actually say which one's major. Which one do you think is major? This one's secondary allylic, that one's secondary allylic. They look about the same to me. Yeah, I don't know which one's major on that one. All right, and then finally the alkyne anion. Let's do it. So yep, that's an allylic alkyne. It can push the electrons that way and push this guy up onto that one. I'm gonna erase this to get more room. Got that one. Okay, and I'll keep going. And I think that's correct. Is it correct? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, ho, 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 that was a weak click. 
Bam, we got it. All right, so we got that one done, and now we're gonna do a curved arrow mechanism for this guy. I don't have enough room on the board, so I'm gonna erase some things and move it up. Okay, here's the MBS allylic bromination mechanism. I did say in lecture that you don't have to know the start of this mechanism. And I stand by that, you don't, I won't ask you that. <clears throat> but I might as well show it, we got some time here. So I said there'd be trace amounts of HBr in the solution of NBS and carbon tetrachloride. And this NBS here, it dissolves slowly. in carbon tetrachloride. So because it dissolves slowly, there's not a lot of it to react to make bromine, which we need in a low concentration. So since it slowly dissolves, it slowly makes bromine, so you get a real low continuous concentration of bromine being made. So what? how does that work? It's not too bad, actually. The interesting thing, we're gonna see a lot of this, uh, is to think about a molecule like this and decide which is the most basic part. Well, we know we have a strong acid, so acidic conditions, we think it's gonna protonate something. Should we have it protonate the bromide? I'm hoping you think no. Uh, and then the nitrogen versus the oxygen. Hmm. Nitrogen is usually more electronegative than oxygen. I'm sorry. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, but nitrogen is more basic than oxygen usually, but not in this case. Because this nitrogen's lone pair is tied up in resonance to both carbonyls, so the oxygen will get protonated. So besides the fact that the nitrogen's lone pairs are tied up in resonance, if I protonate the oxygen, either one, the product will have resonance. And so it's sort of like we predict acid-base chemistry when we look at the conjugate base. Not sort of, it's just like it. We look at the conjugate base and we look for stability in it. Well, in this case, we're looking at this base, yeah. And instead of being an anion, it's becoming, well, usually we look at the conjugate base. We're looking at the conjugate acid in this case. And the conjugate acid has resonance to stabilize it when we protonate the oxygen. Uh, and so this is a more stable conjugate acid making this a stronger base versus if say the nitrogen was protonated it wouldn't have any resonance so if you want try protonating the nitrogen and see what it looks like all right so once we get to that point then i'm going to erase my resonance arrows you're almost there it's just a matter of the bromine Bromide attacking the bromine on the nitrogen, and it could. I'll show it. I'll show it this way. I'll go here, and then I'll show this resonance so you can see how that works.
right, so let's see why you had a positive charge on this. No, no charge. And you can draw this mechanism with either resonance structures, right? So it could have been drawn this way. Gives you the same thing. Okay, so this was all just done to get a, some Br2, but in a low concentration. If you have a high concentration of bromine, it'll just add right to the pi bond anti-addition. A low concentration, then there's only a little bit in the solution, and it might get hit with the light before it hits the pi bond, starts the whole radical mechanism. So now I'll do the, the radical mechanism. The, the rest of the mechanism, that's what you're responsible for, like I can ask you on the exam, but I won't ask this. Okay, so we have this low concentration of bromine uh, that before it runs into a pi bond, it might get hit with a photon of light, breaking it apart. And here we go. This is a, an initiation step. No radicals to radicals, we initiate the process. Then our alkene is going to react with it, and uh, we want to make the most stable radical. So we have some secondary carbons, some vinyl carbons, and a tertiary allylic carbon. That's where it's going to go, tertiary allylic. That'll make the most stable radical. So here we go. Can you meet me halfway? I'm saying that too good. That might actually get me like YouTube restrictions for copyrights. So let's just see. Fergie's going to be knocking on my door. Yeah, let's call that radical. There we go. So we had a radical, bromine radical. We made a carbon radical. This is a propagation. And this uh, carbon radical has resonance. Which you can see with like that, right? All right, so let's get on to the next propagation step. We can do it for each of those. I'll do it with the first one first. So. so our radical, carbon radical, is gonna react with the bromine. And that didn't create a stereocenter. It's the same around the ring. But it did start as a carbon radical, one radical on this reactant side, and bromine radical, 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 propagation. Next up, the uh, resonance structure of that. Also react. have it we made both of them um, and we can do some terminations I'll go ahead and do some any two radicals let's say I'll have like let's have this one with that one that would make some interesting products 
might collide two radicals, combining to make zero radicals. Create a stereo center and now. Uh, yep, I think that's it. Uh, maybe I should double check though. Let's go one, two, three carbons off the ring on both sides. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, that looks right. Or you could just do and draw it. Two bromines coming together. I think so, like that. All right, here, this uh, exit question I'm gonna answer is an example of the, uh, the last things we were talking about in lecture today with the conjugated dienes reacting with HBr. <clears throat> so, there we go. The key thing with these is to just work out the mechanism, like I've been saying forever. So we're under acidic conditions, hydrobromic acid, so we're thinking protonate first, positive charged organic intermediates. So what do you think is going to happen? <clears throat> is this pi bond going to swing away to make a tertiary allylic carbocation? Or is the pi bond going to open that way and make a secondary carbocation that's not allylic, no resonance? It's going to definitely make the tertiary, so swing it open this way. There we go, make a tertiary allylic carbocation and the bromide. <clears throat> and this, of course, has resonance. This occurs at hinge right here, there. Um. <clears throat> you see in our products we have the E alkene and the Z alkene coming from this resonance structure. And that can happen if this rotates, right? So if you have that right there. This is just a rotation of that bond. It could happen before too. So over here you have this alkene is highest priority and E alkene there, right? This one there is a highest priority, highest priority E as well. And the middle currently is, oh, it's S trans. because the two alkenes are, forget about all the other stuff. This is S trans, this is S cis. Okay, so <clears throat> this is in equilibrium with its S cis. All right, so I'm gonna erase this to have room to finish off the mechanism. You can see, hopefully you see it's almost done. This bromide adding to the carbocations. Oh, I'll finish off the resonance for this guy too. Bromide adds there it gives you the one with it gives you this bottom one here. 
Okay, let me pause. All right, I redrew this, so the bromide now can just come onto that carbo cation, like an SN1. And when it does, it creates a new stereo center, and it gives us our two enantiomers there. Could our pi bond switch around to that? Yeah, you know, we'll also get this. Because this guy, well, yeah, I'm not saying we don't get it. Let's not, I don't know if we're gonna get much of that. <clears throat> Cause it has a full half pi bond. This, I'm, I'm thinking about this rotating as a carbon cation. It won't rotate as a full pi bond but it's a, this resonant structure, you can see it's got half single bond, half double bond, but I think it's not gonna rotate enough. So I think I'm gonna forget about that one, just that one. And then this one here, can add to that one to give me one of the secondary bromides, this one being the Higher priority, this is the E alkene, this one. And the other one could be if this rotated. And I'm fine with rotating that one from the S. Trans could have been S cis, and the carbocations right there then. The bromide comes in. And this one now, highest priority, highest priority. This is my Z alkene. Done.